मैं बोलने तक आना गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग ऑल पेट लवर्स डॉग ओनर्स पेट पेट फॉलोअर्स एज वेल एज डॉग लवर्स दिस इज अमृत कॉमनली नोन एज डॉग गुरु आई हैव बीन एन अपॉइंटेड एडवाइजर टू ट्रेन डॉग्स इन द कर्नाटका स्टेट पुलिस आई हैव बीन हेल्पिंग आउट विथ बिहेवियल कंसल्टेशन फॉर द आर पी एफ द रेलवे प्रोटेक्शन फोर्स वे वी हैव द ट्रेनिंग सेंटर इन फोदनोर नियर कोयम्बतूर डाउन साउथ and a uh, couple of times if and when required i've also been assisting the crpf the central reserve police force of the nation where we've got 400 plus belgian malinois working across our border why is dog guru or amrit helping all these agencies what what is the speciality in amrit being dog guru it turns out to be that i am a graduated certified dog psychologist from a uni- university named unitech in auckland new zealand i graduated in the year 2009 since then we've been doing this and today I welcome you all we are here to do understand how police train their dogs or how i train dogs for the police to start with we'll have basic obedience just the come the sit the down and the stay which is the most important and behind me there could also be a salute if required for the dog and depending on the time and most most important for these dogs in the police just like every constable to an ias commissioner who has been appointed they get the physical testing happening so breeds that work for the police would also have their agility that is their physical fitness and their mental fitness more important balancing activities trained on we would start with the agility so we would have our friend dutch shepherd the crpf has the pilot project of dutch shepherd already working in the nation this is our dutch shepherd she was 11 year old female called cole she would do her jumps come here and we would get to her agility first and then followed by a little bit of obedience i wouldn't give much importance to the obedience because all most of all our dogs are obedient until date we only been seeing police dogs do the salute sleep roll things like that so we would stick to the basic simple commands and get to the next part of it remember we will all we are here to answer your questions so keep your questions in mind you can start typing it writing it down end of the shot visual visuals we would get to the question and answer here we would have kol doing her agility what is this this is a bite biting gives the dog the highest neurological stimulation so why kol is jumping all that happily we are not pulling her asking her to go over it choking her and stuff she is doing her with her happiness coming over here because she gets to bite this and you'll all watch that call come yuppie oh shut up what up yes sir you look at the bite force ah i am getting tired right so dog this is her motivation so why a psychological training entered the police department was earlier dogs used to obey but not knowing why now they would obey for a treat depending on their drive out out good girl she drops the thing when asked to her toy when asked to so that way earlier we would get the dogs to just obey for no reason otherwise they would be pushed pulled these sort of things would happen but now we understand in the psychological aspect what is the drive that's important for the dog or what is something that the dog would always want to do or want treat food game depending on what they want see the salute she is doing the salute there and staying in the salute position only because she loves to do it end of it she got something right we would get called to do we'll start from the come nana from a distance right stop the come remember he moved two steps back we'll do redo it again come right sit
down. Say, leave the dog there. Now the same dog, come with me. Who is so agile, so active, with so much of energy. For the physical fitness, like I mentioned, mental fitness is equally important for them. This dog should know that it's not going to jump on somebody, bite somebody unnecessarily. Yes, that's called their mental assertiveness and calmness. We would now get into something called tactical training. What is tactical training? Like our armed forces dogs, the dog would get into a place position. And here, it's a part of obedience in place with a weapon on hand. The dog is not supposed to walk to the left, but would walk between the legs and move slowly, cautiously towards the decoy. I would give more place towards the decoy. Like how we teach the dog to heal, turn around, and here, whenever there's a decoy and they're alert there, waiting for the attack. See, the dog doesn't just go on. And here somebody is going to push me. Ah! This was the same dog who was just sitting quietly, not moving, staying in front of all of us with the decoy around. This gets to protection training, assault training, and attack training, which is very much required when we have to get to other parts of our working dogs, as in anti-terrorism, anti-anti-naxalite sort of training. The same dog would release and be friendly with the same boy once it's done. Now, we should next get into the narcotic training part of it. During narcotics, what are the type of narcotics that our dogs basically are trying to do. Narcotics like marijuana, cocaine, heroin, LSD, these are narcotics that is a part of the drug world today, which is spoiling the whole nation's youth, children because of depression, children because of fear of failure, get into these habits, or they're brought into these habits by their so-called friends who are a part of the game. Primarily, they are forced to it once or twice to experience, and then it becomes a habit to them. And once it's habituated, they're pushed into crime. And it's not from now. Friends, we know it's been there for ages. Now, dogs' keen sense of smelling is very easy for them to track it down. We'll be using just like college bags, school bags, where a minute amount of the narcotic would be hidden. These dogs are trained to identify. I will show the same with our German Shepherd. Come, Dolly! Here we have a German Shepherd. She's a three year old dog. She's been doing this work for quite a while now. Here again, without a command, she sits. The moment she's here, she knows it's her working time. And when she's got to work, she's waiting for the command and then she goes searching for it. Now we'll just see. How she looks at everything. But she's wondering, there's something there. And then she confirms, I'm yet not confident. I would try pulling her. Will she get up and come? No, she doesn't want to. Yeah. So there she gets a toy. Now, this is the toy. A Kong, she would not want to leave. She came all the way, searching, searching, searching. They do their work in malls, IT parks. We provide narcotic dogs, explosive dogs, narcotics, especially to colleges, universities, hostels, cargoes, courier services, and our uh, e-commerce sites. So there, drug checks happen. Next, we're going to have our explosive with another German Shepherd. So here, she did everything just for this Kong. 
that she would love to play with. Out. Good girl. Uh -uh. Sit. Good. Now, dogs selected for such work should not be over possessive. It's not that they're going to bite us or growl at us when we ask them to give the Kong back. Yes, she's whining to go back for the search, but this is not narcotics anymore. We've already come into the explosive section. Right, explosives. When we know that the hidden agendas of terrorists, unknowingly, they've been counseled, convinced on several religious unwanted aspects, bringing them into terrorism and then keeping bombs. What is that in a bomb? Why a dog searches for a bomb? And what is that in a bomb that the dog searches for? Again, like we smart humans, fool these dogs, stating that you find a scent from which a bomb could be made, then what do you get? You get a toy to play with. So dogs with play drive, play, P-L-A-Y, prey drive, P-R-E-Y, and hunt drive, H-U-N-T. These are the three, three drives we look in a dog. If a dog is a balance of all the three, these dogs qualify. Are they only German Shepherds, Belgian Shepherds, or Labradors, Doberman who could do it? No. We have our Indian dogs also who can do it. Primarily, the few governments like the Karnataka State Police have also adopted few Indies who we are training now on a pilot project. Our Indies are our Indian mongrels to identify drugs and bomb. Very soon will be out and PetFed would also support the event. We will introduce it to you, all of you, the first few Indies who are finding bombs, drugs, and having a respectable life from the street to being a highly decorated canine officer very soon. Now we have another German Shepherd doing the explosives. Explosives are normally made. A big bomb which we see in a movie, clicking light and stuff like that, there are chemicals in it. Something like TNT, could be RDX, could be a uh, few components of uh, nac uh, nitrates, chlorides, phosphates. These are basic elements which must and should be a part of an explosive. So dogs are trained to identify very small aspects. And once they identify, this is how they're going to demonstrate the same. Can I have this boy called Bali? This is another German Shepherd. He's four years old. If people who've come to Bangalore, if you've gone to malls like the Forum or the Orion Mall, this is the dog who works there. They're on and off because of the COVID. Bali. I didn't have to say anything much. I'm on a voice recorder. All of you mic. You all can listen to me. He finds it sitting there, wondering what next. Pull all in leash. He rechecks. I'm sitting there. I'm not going to get up. I'm not going to move just because you moved. Only because of the toy again. So the drive in them teaches them. Now, the tug. After finding it, I want to tug. I want to tell them that I am an achiever. I won. Yes, he won. He won saving thousands of innocents' life, not knowing what he's doing, for us together in a day they work to just get that. I would want to thank all the three dogs who gave us a demonstration. Here, this is how these dogs are trained. We earlier uh, thought we would have a video of how the vehicles are checked or how the normal random checks that happen in the society happens. But then Petfit clearly told us, see, the end result of dogs working as police, we could see them. But how they train? Using what are they trained? Why they are trained and why they want to work? This is what we would want to understand better. Our viewers would want to understand better is what PetFed wanted from us. And that's how we could get them to do. Your questions are awaited. I would uh, ask our uh, Soumya to go ahead and uh, take, up, take it over from here. Soumya would help me get the questions so that I can answer them. Hi, hi, Amrit. Hi, Samia. Hi, thank you so much, first of all, for such a brilliant demo. I also would like to thank all the three dogs. Uh, you know, it was really uh, brilliant watching uh, what our dogs are capable of doing. 
uh, on the screen. It was amazing. Uh, a lot of people joined us, and I'm sure they have a few questions. Uh, Kanupriya here is asking, uh, I have a beagle. Can we train a beagle? So like this brings me to the question where what are the kind of breeds uh, that can be trained uh, for a police dog squad? Is a beagle a dog that can be trained to become a police dog or a security dog or, uh, you know, guard dogs for that matter? Beagles fall under the hound group, which also says they are excellent working dogs. One. Okay. Second, can they be worked the police? Yes, they can. What can they be worked as? Third, they are the best when it comes to the narcotic checks. The reason being, like I showed you on the play drive, where we gave them a toy. Beagles are food-driven dogs. Beagles and Cocker Spaniels are these small dogs who would love to eat, 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 eat all day and not get tired. They're small, right. handy, easier for airport checks, easier for baggage checks, cargo checks. The Beagles, Cocker Spaniels are the best dogs across the world who could be trained to check for our narcotics. And also, beagles are highly used in countries with the P Pacific Islands, the Fiji, New Zealand, Samoa, Australia, for something called MAF, that's Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, because these countries ban plant and animal products coming into their country. So in the airports, beagles check, because they're in the AC, they can check up to 12, 14, 15 hours. They check every bag to find out if there is even a little bit of chutney powder, pickle, oh, yeah. uh, okay are uh, uh, peacock feather, uh, uh, shoes or belt that is made of uh, snake skin. These shouldn't allow the, the, these are not allowed in those countries. So eagles are very useful for that. Awesome. Okay. So I hope Kanupriya, you uh, heard that one. Uh, so before I move on to a couple of other questions that I have, Amrit, uh, you were telling me uh, before we went live also that how uh, crime detection is also something that we can uh, see a demo of. So can you yes. uh, meanwhile ask it's your uh, people to prepare? OK, so should we uh, do much. that and then move we, on? We to have a Labrador Max here. OK. And normally what happens, what is that today is easily stolen? One, data across the world. So we've got clouds, we've got servers. And uh, can a dog find out data? No, but it can find out material that is could be your uh, hard drives, could be your mobile oh, wow. phones, could be a laptop, oh, wow. could be your tabs. And how they do it, we will show you a demonstration right here. Right. Come so um, now we have Max here. Max is our Labrador, who's normally who's into our crime detection. And Max, being a Labrador, he's been extremely good in doing that. And we are proud to also say that he has, in fact, helped in solving a lot of cases when it comes to theft, robbery in Bangalore. So, and so we, we also found a lady who had lost her memory. She, she went, left her home, and she could not get back. Third day from then, Max took us to a temple and showed that was the last place she was sitting. From there, the CCTV cameras helped us to source where she went. That's how useful these dogs are. Now, how are we going to use Max? We would use a mobile charger and a mobile. Mobile and the charger, because mobiles are stolen, but not the chargers. So what we'll do, we'll get Max to get the scent of the charger, whereas we'll hide the mobile and let's see if he can find it. I hope I'm on screen. So I shall hide the mobile here, behind the board, so it's not very visible. And I would not walk back in the straight path I came because two things. We don't want the dog to track my scent. We want him to track what is lost. Because tracking, if he's going to track my scent, that's human search. In search and rescue, that's going to be ground search, ground scenting, or the floor scenting. But now we want him to do air scenting and find out if he can understand or identify where that's gone to. I would pluck some grass, let it flow to find out which direction the air is going. Because we want air from there to hit towards this uh, camera, as in towards the dog's face. So air from there comes, and the dog is going that way. Can we have Max? Yeah, Maxie. Scent, scent. 
Sent? Okay. He's ready to go. Maxi, go find. See, now he goes wherever I've been. You saw the directions I'd been there. Taking the air, taking the ground, going all around. And when they're tracking, we should never go in front of them. So we should always stay a little back so that these are places we moved around. That was the reason I stopped. See, now he's going back to wherever we went. Find it, Max. Go find. Go find. Go find. Reason? No air. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. No. And here, the dogs are not supposed to put their mouth into the evidence. Because it could be a fingerprint, it could be a gun, it could be things that a dog, uh, or it could be a knife that's used in a murder mystery, things like that, or clothing that was used, or articles used by criminals. So we see with that, they do not lick the place or probably stamp on it. As far as they find it, get more excited, start scratching, there we know it is. So observation, timing, alertness, assertiveness are the key when we are training a dog because explosives yes we know that the dog is going to sit down not did when you observed the dog did not sit on the box the dog sat next to the box narcotics the dog didn't take it in the mouth and start playing with it smelt sat beside patiently waited a lot of times we've seen few uh, demonstration videos on a uh, few social media where the dog jumps on and sits on the box which used to happen earlier that's not right now it should be sitting next to the box. So just how we saw the crime identification, these dogs, the uh, crime detection dogs are not only used for this. Okay, good boy, you've done your work. You've done the job, you've done the job. You're done. Now, we'll finish, we'll finish your work, you're done. Go boy, go boy. See, because that, come here boy, do the same here. Come here. You're done. You're done for the day. No more. No more searching. 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 This is how much they love to do their work. You're done. Thank you. That's amazing, Max. They fall on the floor. <laughs> See, because for him, that is his motivation. He would love to roll over the floor that he's done it. I've achieved it. I found it. Because like the other ones we were telling, no food, no game here, but it is their motivation. It's just the happiness he gets. That way. More right. questions? Right. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, before we move on to more audience questions, I wanted to ask you, so, uh, like you said, that they're not, whatever kind of detection they are doing, they're not allowed to sit uh, on the subject that they have found. Uh, how do they um, exactly tell the guard or the security officer along with them that they found it? Is it just sitting around it? Or like I noticed uh, Max wagging his tail when he found the phone that was stolen. So uh, what kind of signs uh, do we look at, uh, the police officers look at, and they finally get to know that, okay, they have found the evidence? With narcotics and explosives, we've got active passive notification. Like okay. narcotics should always be a passive notification. We don't want the dog to bark or scratch. Just sit down. Uh, narcotic sitting down is fine. They could bark if it's a college, depending on that. But when it is crime, their excitement, like German shows, we've got the ears just move. So like I mentioned, observing is very important because even till then, the dog was still, he was not very sure. See, mm. they're explosive. They know this is the four cent and they've been trained. Practice. Narcotics, five cents. Trained. Practice. But when it comes to scent identification, it's a different human being. Different mobile phone. Different. It could, it could have been a rape. It could have been a murder. It could have been theft. It could have been, like I just mentioned, the success story which Max had done in Bengaluru, where we lost a lady. She didn't have a memory power. She, she didn't have a medicine for three days. We don't know where she had gone. And the family panicked. So they were in tears. They're like, we'll do anything. Kindly help us. 
we were not very sure. I personally was not very sure that Max could bring out this miracle because it was three days oh. and there would have been hundreds of people who walked around the place. He, oh. just this way, he went zigzag, sinusoidal, he did everything possible, went to a temple near the place and just started nowhere. He's like, I'm here. So I don't know anything from here. So we were like, Kisina Deka, did you see anybody here who's an old three days ago photo? And the person who sells the flour and nariel and all those things, the So he told me, we observed someone, but we don't know if it's that because I was busy in the sales. And the good thing is we had a, an ATM counter behind. And that confirmed that the lady was there. Okay. That awesome. way we could find her back from that. That is so impressive. That's impressive. So Max only did this, right? Yes. So cool. Okay, so uh, tell me something, Amrit. Like, um, this is a question that everybody has in their minds. Like, what is the difference between police dogs, security dogs, and service dogs? Service dogs could be brought down into seizure warning dogs, epilepsy warning dogs, where these dogs can identify the impulse. How can a dog identify an impulse? What's an impulse? The pee 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 thing we see on the ECG machines. That's our impulse. Right. How, how do you know that that dog can identify an impulse? Every dog can identify your impulse in your house. Yeah. Few people call me and tell me, sir, I just woke up to every evening I watch a TV serial or I watch something on Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever, whatever YouTube. So there, when I get up to go bring myself a glass of water, my dog doesn't get up. When I get right. up to go put my phone on charge, my dog doesn't get up. But the moment I think, okay, chala, I'll go sleep, it's done. I'm not turned it off. No body posture change. I'm just thinking I want to sleep. My dog gets up. He's ready. Right. Oh. Because yeah. the dog from a puppyhood would have identified our impulse, heart to brain, and would have followed you a couple of times. This impulse, thirsty. This impulse, beer. This impulse, mobile phone. This impulse, toilet. This impulse, eight hour, no attention. And they go to sleep. But I'm not asleep. So this is where I have to get alert. Similarly, people who, get, who are epileptic, they get this attack or epilepsy attack a couple of times a day. They have a different odor that comes out of their body. One very lightly, few times. And the second thing is the impulse. The, the short circuit in the impulse that happens. Dogs are trying yeah. to identify that and give them a uh, uh, notification, just like what we saw Max do something. So a dog who's just comfortably walking on heel with you suddenly falls down and starts rubbing his back on the floor. That is tell you that in the next three, 30 seconds to three minutes, you'll have an epilepsy attack. So they would lie down, show the card on their chest. I'm an epileptic patient, so do not harm me. It's my dog. Let me finish, get up, wash my face and walk. That is a service dog. Cancer yeah. detection dog or COVID detection dogs today are dogs okay. who can send urine or saliva samples and tell if they are uh, a patient or do they need to go for the next round of testing. This is okay. a service dog. Blind guide dogs, dogs who behave like an eye for the blind people, they are yeah. service dogs. Or therapy yeah. dogs, these are service yeah. dogs. Now let's come to the police. Police have yeah. dogs who find narcotics. Police have dogs who find explosives. Police have mm -hmm. dogs who do the crime detection or they're tracking. Right. right. Now, since the last couple of uh, years, we police I've introduced uh, to the state police on what is assault work. The one you saw, tactical training where he went and bit him and we yeah. roomed him around and stuff like that. That's called the assault work. So that right. is, we are using that for chain snatching. So a person snatches a chain and the market runs away. The dog mm -hmm. jumps from the jeep, go, goes in the uh, crowd, finds only the person who's got the chain and attacks him. So okay. that way, this is for the police. Now, okay. service dogs, police dogs, and the third one you asked was pet dogs or home dogs, is it? Security dogs. Security dogs. Security yeah. patrolling, or we also call it as infantry patrolling in some words. That's a little bigger terminology. But then security right. patrolling dogs, like a lot of these uh, sites have hired our company dogs, like there's the, the Hindu group, the Vedanta Mines. They've got the big constructions of prestige, embassy, mm -hmm. where what these dogs do, they are used to mark the territory once by urinating the place, and okay. then they start going on rounds every day. This dog can easily identify who broke my path. For example, if this is the path I every day, the reason why I'm rubbing my floor is dogs mark their path with their saliva or their nose, marking their path around the territory. And when there is something unknown that has cut my path, is when dogs take an immediate turn to identify and tell the handler, Yes, this is the way we go every day. But today I'm going this way because somebody has come here. And then the, right. those dogs track it to the person. If a known, unknown person has cut the tracks, easy for the dog to identify. Once they right. do, 
then they will even track to where they went from or where they came from. It's easy to identify, okay, they went to the storeroom and we have something missing. From there, they went to the Panwala shop. So next, you can inquire the Panwala who had come here at what times. Or go back yeah. to your CCTV cameras because dogs are the only thing in security for narcotics, explosives, patrolling, service, working, who can work as a deterrent. That's the only way uh, that it will stop a crime in the head, not even in the hand. Because yeah. everything else today is only post the crime. We could only yeah. do post-mortem. We could find out who did it, punish them. But stopping the person of thinking of crime in that territory can... Okay. That way. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, Vinay is asking, what training can be given to English Mastiff apart from basic obedience? English Mastiffs have been the best in search and rescue. Mastiffs and St. Bernard are great dogs when it comes to search and rescue. Because awesome. in snow, in jungles, when you lose a person, they're good at scenting. They can find a, a child who's lost in the woods. They can find a person lost in snow who's been hidden in the snow. Other than that, English masks are great guard dogs for bigger territories, so big bungalows or houses which are in one or two acres. They're the best of guard right. dogs. But remember, right. they are the best of gentle giants. They're the best dogs to identify snakes if you have in your garden. Because English masks are not the ones who go and snap. They would stop. They would bark, bark and stop the okay. threat there. So there's a snake going to be okay. there. If there's a snake, it's going to be three feet away from the English master. Snake moves, the English master go back and still. That's how English masters oh. are used, can be used. All right. All right. And uh, Shreyas is asking, Shreyas Neil is asking, how difficult is it to train, um, uh, uh, you know, for, uh, for boxers? Like, is it difficult to train boxers? boxers are the best guard dogs. Boxes are good for right. guarding. Boxes are good for uh, security of your house. Boxes are good for uh, agility. They are good for that. After okay. that, can we train them on other service? We can, but we have to identify. Because their snout is small, their olfactory bulbs or retention of scenting is less. So we normally do not put in all the energy training a dog who would be less effective compared to a long-snouted dog. Okay. All right. Okay, um, Niharika is asking, uh, and uh, a couple of other people are asking the same, that how old uh, are the dogs when they start uh, the training in the canine unit? Dogs, the obedience start, socialization and obedience start at a very early age. But then task right. specific, we could start once they are six months old. Right. Okay. Awesome. And uh, about task specific, like, uh, for example, let's talk about narcotic detection. So um, when we are teaching like uh, a narcotic detection to police dogs, um, is it that they are taught for separate drugs, drugs separately or uh, can they like, uh, you know, sniff out first, any sort of... First, train them on one, one, one particular chemical. Once the dog has identified that and they're good in doing that, then we would use the same space or the box for All different right. chemicals. Once they identify and understand that they have to give back a response, that is a okay. passive or an active, then changing the chemicals would not take much time. We could probably and do even more. They can or probably do even? Your, we lost one you. Day. So once a dog has learned very well to understand and find out marijuana, then in the same box, yeah. we could use LSD for a day, cocaine the next day, heroin the next day, and finish it in five days. Okay, okay. And can we like untrain the dog also, for example, in countries where marijuana is in, uh, legalized now? So like, you know, they'll probably not want, uh, like I was reading about it also online. We wouldn't call, so it, can we we... Wouldn't call it untrained. What we do uh -huh. is we will let the dog find marijuana and not give them a treat for it. But then we okay. will only keep giving treat for what is required. So they right. themselves stop finding it because they understand. See, Shakespeare himself told an old dog can be taught new tricks. So it's not right. unlearning, but then they're learning to do this better. They stop doing that. Right. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Kartika's asking, I have a four-year-old Lhasa app. So can I train him uh, for uh, something more? Uh, like, can I train, train him now since he's a little uh, temperamental? Any tips on how I can begin? This is a generic uh, training question. See, if it's going to be a Lhasa app, so get them sterilized if you're not breeding them. One, because normally hormones does hijack the intelligence or trainability of dogs, primarily. Second, okay. uh, they can be good good in the... Lassapsos are great in guarding. They, they're the best guard dogs in right. a little bit. So they're good okay. at guarding. 
you could actually give them mental uh, stimulus like rather than giving them their food in a bowl you could uh, hide their food in different parts of your garden get them to find it for himself so you're just making him more mentally and physically working so the more you work him the more comfortable he gets to be you can still use detection detection of rodents your rats your mice things like that they're great at finding super okay uh vedans asking is there a thing that a few breeds are easier to be trained in and some aren't uh for example uh, is doberman an easy breed uh, always heard that dobermans aren't so for different types of training breed plays a 33.3% in trainability so the group origin of the breed does play a 33% the other 33% goes on their parentage their parents how active how smart how much they were into working then the last 33% goes on the person who's training now okay if he's a good trainer if he's if he can understand the psychology of the dog then he right. should be able to train any dog for anything primarily okay. but the result would not be that great i understand for example if you're using a pug to find a narcotic then yes the dog can do very well no doubt but would not mm -hmm. last for more than 3 to 6 years whereas a dog with a longer snout doberman labrador german shepherds they could probably work for 12 years we retire them oh. at 8 or 9 but then the longevity because the dog is taking the narcotic scent which is hitting the brain and the heart or the lungs very fast that way right okay uh, rahul is asking uh, my uh, rahul padhya is asking my beagle only searches when he is in the mood how to improve which also means that he's overfed okay so if he's going to search his stomach is full so he's not going to search he'll only search when he's hungry so rather than giving him big meals at times distribute the meals so his energy and activity is going to be across the 12 hours of your day awesome okay uh, ankit vashishth is asking what training should be given to a female german shepherd apart from basic obedience female german shepherd are the best dog german shepherds are the best dogs to be with children take them to children schools nurseries they are okay. great as far as you have not trained them to be assault or attacking dogs then they are very generous very comfortable with children so if if you have a play school nearby get them to socialize children can play with them and also come out from the you could remove that from the children and the parents said that german shepherds or alsatians basically aren't dogs who would kill they are great yeah, to be with yeah. and german shepherds especially females are extremely good with children they can also take them to special children schools okay all right Okay. Uh, Manchul is asking: Is there a different training for every state's police dogs, or is there a common training module that is used for all police dogs across every state? According to me, as a psychologist who has given semester-wise papers, the thing is, every dog, every dog, regardless of being a breed, regardless of being siblings, yes, every dog would have a different method. because each okay. dog is a different individual each dog would want to learn in a different way a mannerism each dog has a different interest identifying that is a task if a psychologist okay. is able to do it and then utilize that then you can train the dog to the best of their ability two decades ago yes all states we had only one way of training dogs where okay. you have to do it it's as simple as that right 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 you have to do it like right. 20 years ago you either had accountants engineers or doctors uh huh today we've got fashion designers we've got makeup artists we've got hair stylists we've got dog psychologists we've got the yeah. different things you got so many different things you got people right. who are a uh, uh, nail nail uh, yeah they do something with the nails nail, um, nail artists nail artists yeah. that's and we have tattoo artists so they are right. doing extremely well similar way because they had that particular thing a silver lining in them similarly every dog has a silver lining for us what is important is to identify the silver lining and utilize that to train that the particular dog for whatever it be it was okay so now uh, every state has their own module is it so or uh... See, uh, yes the crpf the rpf and the karnataka state police where i'm there we've been changing modules to get it to motivational uh, methods and maharashtra has welcomed me to go on board and help them out with the same yes okay. the results are the same but the methods we have to identify what happens is it's not the dog and in our police mm. system what happens normally across the state 
is that a person who was heading the dog squad would tomorrow get to heading the traffic. From there, he gets to the oh, CBI. Oh. From there, he gets to the COD. Right. Right? Right. What happens is that one when you don't have one master there, things change. That's why they right. go out for advisors or consultants like me. That we're going to be common. Whoever changes, oh. government changes, officers change. We will be common there to identify these dogs and get their working. So it has been successful to almost 60% of the country that they're all using motivational methods because all of them are following the CRPF. That's the biggest dog uh, training center in the country, the Central Reserve Police Force. And that's given miraculous results. Even today, I, I, would, I would not be wrong if I say every three days we have one dog finding probably 25 kilos of an IED 10 feet down the floor across oh. borders from the CRP. They're doing excellent work. Nice. Interesting statistics. Uh, Rahul has another question for you. Uh, for you, He says that my Beagle and German Shepherd, they play while doing searching together. How to train them together? Beagle and German Shepherd, you can use toys for your German Shepherd, food for your Beagle, so they don't fight between each other on what they're searching. Hide it in different places. Give them the same command. But remember, you're going to pamper the one who finds it first, not who retrieves it first. Because oh. both of them are not Labrador or both of them are not Retriever. Your German Shepherd may find it and stay there. Your Beagle may right. find it, eat and sleep there. Okay. Right? Or one may come back to you. Probably the German Shepherd may come back to you. Because right. they've got a balance between the play drive and the prey drive. They'll capture the prey, come back to play. Play drive or the game drive is where I want to be. I want the handler or my owner to be a part. You have right. two dogs who will pick up something in their mouth. They are chewing like this. The mouth, blah, 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 blah. nervous dogs, positive dogs, they don't want to give. Right? But here, compared to a Beagle and a German Shepherd, both could retrieve or both may not. But remember to give attention to the one or more praising to the one who found it first and not one who retrieved it first. Okay. All right. Uh, we have some more interesting questions coming up. Uh, Rani here is asking, uh, this is a question which can get a bit, uh, you know, emotional also. Like she's asking what happens to police dogs after they retire? They are given away for very well-known government aided institutions like probably SPCA, CUPA and stuff like that. Uh, our Army Dogs in Mira, they have an adoption center. If they know the owner, if they're an ex-army or police officer who's been in the dog squad, who knows them well, they want to take them home, they welcome it. Otherwise, they're given away to centers, not basically to individuals, because a lot of people have this misconception that if I had it when I was a child, I would always yeah. want to adopt a retired police dog and try tricks with him, like what happens in the movie right. Holiday with uh, Akshay Kumar and stuff like that. But right. what basically right. happens is that, because we supply sniffer dogs and patrolling dogs from Amrit Dog Guru to firms. So when these dogs retire and come back, it's a very big task to keep them back because they have worked eight hours a day finding drugs, finding bombs. Now, when they come to your house, they have nothing to do. They are not exactly. used to this environment. They're going to, and we think that giving them a lot of love and affection, pampering them, putting them on the sofa will comfort them. No, they are classically trying to do that work. Right. Okay. Right. So it's always better. They are given away to aid the, what they've been doing now. They've been given out to uh, these institutions who know what can be done with those dogs. One. And institutions like me, what we do, our retired dogs, we use them for uh, substitution. So when I have uh, eight to nine or 12 year old dogs sitting in the kennel, uh, once they're done with their job and one of my four year old falls ill or probably he's got a loose tummy that day. So we'll send this boy back so that at least he's happy that day that I worked, I worked and I came back. Another <laughs> week he's waiting to go back to work. Right. You not believe most of our dogs working in tech parks as bomb detection dogs or drug detection dogs in schools and colleges do not eat on their week off. They don't eat one piece of a kibble. Wow. Okay. okay. It is not it is not that Ramzan, it is not Ekadsi. It is just that they feel today I did not go to play because they don't know they're working. Mm -hmm. They feel they're playing. Oh. Today I didn't right. play, I didn't get something, so I don't eat. Right. Interesting. That's their so they're actually That's pretty dedicated towards their work. Lots to learn from them. Yeah, totally. <laughs> the work ethic and dedication for sure. Okay, so like what is the um, age of retirement for police dogs, for army dogs? I'm not too sure with the army, but police, it's between nine and ten. Nine and ten. Okay. Depending on the or fitness. Depending on the fitness. 
Okay. Uh, Shreyas is asking, Shreyas has another question for us. He's asking, what is the best reward while training? Uh, toys of what kind and treats of what kind are given uh, while we're training the dogs? Any toy can be a good reward, provided it comes to him as a reward. What am I telling? When I go to somebody's house and see a dog lying in a pool of toys, that's not a reward. Mm -hmm. You can give them your old sock. You can give them your old torn jeans. Cut them, use them for tugging, use them for playing. Hide them, tie them. Use your old uh, face hand napkin, tie them. Make a ball out of it. They're fine because it can be washed again. That's okay. Yeah. Provided they get everything as a reward. Get them to do an obedient trick. Ask them to stay where they are. Ask them to keep quiet. Tell them who's it, who's it, find out who's there. They went barking, come back and give a reward. Whatever you give, ask them to do something which you like and then give it to them. You want them to jump on you, fair enough, ask them to jump on you. You want them to lick you, go on your knees, ask them to lick you, then give a treat. Let them understand that you are the leader. You tell me what to do and I get something out of it. Rather than giving them free treats, they get bored later. And that's yeah. why there's everything lying and they don't want to pick up anything. Okay. Same okay. with food. Yes. Dog should always wait for the food. No food waiting for the dog business. Okay. People leave food. Okay. Eight hours I'm not at home. Uh, probably my dog's going to feel bad. So I leave a bowl of food here and there. Never do that. Yeah. Okay. Let the dog wait for the food. They should value. One. Second thing. Dogs don't have taste buds. They only get the smell or essence. So when you okay. leave the food open, the smell is all over the place. If you mm -hmm. spend more than four hours in a halwai shop or a sweet meat shop, you're not going to eat a sweet there. <laughs> it's just like a person in the bar. He would hate to drink. Yeah. Because he's always smelling of liquor, right? So that way, right. the same thing happens to a dog. Right, right. Actually makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, answer is asking, is real scent used for detection dog training or do we use pseudo scents? Which pseudo I scents think... are used when it comes to narcotics during the training period. While I'm passing out the dog, while they test or the competition, we use the real scent for narcotics. For explosives, right. we have got uh, something called NETS, non-explosive testing samples. They are the original scents, but they are in such minute quantity or they are embedded on things uh, where they cannot explode. Ah, right. right. So they are two scents. Okay, all right. No cracker. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much, I think, what he had in mind, too. Okay, um, what is the eligibility criteria for becoming a, becoming a police dog? See, there is nothing that you can get into the police dog squad in certain. You first, you have normal eligibility to get into a police. And once you get there, depending on the posting, you either get into... Uh, I could talk about Karnataka State because I'm from here. So you got yes. the KSP, Karnataka State Police, and the CAR. CAR is the City right. Arm Reserve. So people who right. get into the City Arm Reserve are the ones who probably would get into forensic... CID, dog squad, narcotics, per right. specifically uh, arms and ammunition, the uh, right. rifles, that way. And the uh, right. KSP gets into the police stations. So that way. Okay. So depending on the, the yeah, basically if they should be 18, they, then they get into their physical fitness. If they're an undergrad, then they get into the constable level and then they get, they write an exam, they get into the inspector level. They're at the KS, uh, the administrative, state level administrative service, they become the ACP, so the DYSPs. Otherwise, if it's the IAS, they come to the DCP level officer. So that's okay, and like, that's uh, like you personally get into a dog squad. In Karnataka, sorry, can you, so what huh? can no you repeat that? Uh, thing that? You can only get into a dog squad. You first have to get okay. into the police, and then depending on your interest, they put you to the dog squad, or depending on the department you're in, you get to the dog squad. But once you get to the dog squad, you get to stay there. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I think uh, what I meant was that is there any eligibility criteria for police dogs? I think police you, dogs? Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought the dog handlers because, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I understood that. Breed, it is their breed, their health. What It was only the breed for probably the 80s, 90s, and the early 2000s. Then came the mm -hmm. breed with the health checks. And now it's breed okay. health with a little bit of the drives. We look at the drives before we select right. them in. Because if the parents are German Shepherds or Dobermans or Labs and they're very lazy, then the chance of the dog being lazy is there. It's not wrong. We can train the dog because my part only comes to the training. But when we get to work, if he's not working as efficiently, he did the first eight minutes to the last eight hour of the day, then if he lets one explosive go in, then we lose lives. So it's not going to be worth it. Okay. All right. And we're going to strain a lazy dog doing it. Instead, let him be in somebody's house playing with children. 
for a couple of minutes or hours rather than working all to right right and uh, you know last question for the day amrit like can my pet become a part of the police dog or is it just like special uh, pets with uh, you know special training schools like you or uh, you know um, only the selected ones become police dogs where do they stay like can a normal pet parents pet uh, my pet become a police dog and can be trained alongside while living with me or do they need to be with their dog handlers and how does it work once a dog is trained for any specific task then the risk of the dog's life is very high so okay. any domestic dog in somebody's house cannot be trained in the police academy one because they're only the state dogs or the central government owned dogs they're all the government owned dogs who are going to be okay. there so you can't okay. own a government dog or a government owned dog will and, not be with you point number one right. but right. yes there are few people who have had german shepherds with high drive so he was barking 24/7 for all four years and then they okay. asked me like can we give him away for you but uh, we would want him when he's retired yes their dog uh -oh. has been working with paul so okay uh, he, he's been trained to be an explosive detector they do okay. visit the dog when they go to the mall and only pet him on the rest hours so once the oh. dog is retired it's going to go back to them by then he's oh. old and tired as well but then they know that the dog is being used uh, for the safety safeguarding of the society one and second thing the happy thing for them is that uh, they can see their dog now and then but if you get it to the police you're not even allowed to go back so when police only take puppies below no, 120 days after that no state police would accept a dog as of my knowledge all right okay amazing i think that covers uh, a lot of questions everyone's question we had a lovely time uh, watching the demonstration other thing i would want to mention lot sure. of people still puppies telling that this father is in the police or mother is in the police they are police dog please remember no government police dog crpf rpf railways state police dogs are allowed to mate oh okay if they're interested they are sterilized so if somebody is going to bluff you just because they are in a uniform that this is from the police department puppy it cannot be the okay. indian army the crpf the they they have their own breeding where they don't sell the puppies out okay all right right so if somebody is going to tell you this is a police puppy police his father found bomb or something it can't be <laughs> okay so that's just them you know bluffing around okay great okay i think amrit we covered all the questions people here are commenting that this was a great session that they really enjoyed it and uh, thank you so much amrit uh, for uh, you know joining us showcasing a brilliant demonstration of how the police forces dogs are trained uh, thank you pet parents who joined us and the ones who asked their questions hope you were uh, able to answer them hope you enjoyed the session and we were able to help you in some way to the ones who missed it uh, any of the demos don't worry this video is going to be available in the pet keeping section on our facebook page or even our youtube channel so you thank can watch thank you max as well thank you max and thank you uh, can you also tell the names of the other three dogs who did the other three okay. demonstrations okay oh, come here all right max all right thank you so much amrit thanks for the session uh, the first dog was cole the dutch shepherd the solid black one and right. the second dog was uh, who did the narcotic was dolly a female german shepherd who works for uh, one of a mall here the third one who works for tech park the bomb squad one was uh, wali v a w l i he's a german shepherd male dog the explosive okay, detector so one and that's max all right. m a w -L All right. So thank you, Cole, Dolly, Wally, and Max. It was amazing having you having you guys on the screen, and of course, Amrit. I already thanked you twice for this, and people here really enjoyed the session. I enjoyed the session personally, and thanks a lot for joining in. Thanks, Petfed, for organizing it. It was a great thing. Luckily, it didn't rain. It rained at three. It rained at three thirty in Bangalore, and it drizzled and stopped five minutes before the thing. So, the, the nature was with us for the show. Thanks, all viewers. I love dogs. If you can't, don't hurt them. Let them be themselves. They're great to live with. Thank you all. Super amazing message. If anybody has any questions for him, you can check out his page on Facebook. It's called Dogguru. In, and uh, you can message him there. All right. Thank you so much, Amrit. Thank you, everybody.